Thank you for listening to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast, available on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Stitcher. Also, please follow Matt's Movie Reviews on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Reddit, Instagram, and MeWe. And of course, be sure to visit mattsmoviereviews.net for the latest reviews, top 10 lists, and more. Now, on to the show. We're so lucky to have found each other. Luck had nothing to do with it. To the great horned god. And our dear mother goddess. My name's Thorn, and I'm a witch. Can I get an antiseptic whip? You know how important it is to me to practice safe blood magic. This is my life partner, Willow. You've got five seconds to get off my lawn before I cut you up into communion wafers. I'm too shabby for a couple of outcasts. And this is my coven. We're not having a big fire this year. Why? It just doesn't feel like Beltane without a big bonfire. Light a candle. What on earth are they doing? They're making a statement. This was the calm before the storm. Before my past finally caught up with me. Who are you? Prom King. Class president. Did you play sports? The cross. <laughs> this coven is built on a foundation of lies. Banish him. Banish him. Banish him. I'm going on a walkabout. You're too old for a walkabout. You have weak ankles. You forced me to face my past, and now I've got to deal with it. Hello, son. You told me your mother is dead. There's the broad. I know it's gotten into me lately. Ah! I'm here to help. Pearl. You're killing the moon. I'm a work in progress! Thornton Adams? What happened to you? I went searching for happiness, and I found it. Hello and welcome to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Perkovich, and this is episode number 410, releasing February 17 in select theatres across the US, as well as on digital and on demand, is King Knight, a triptastic comedy that stars Michael Gary Gubler as the high priest of a coven of New Age witches who undergoes a spiritual journey when he is banished from his clan. In equally sincere and silly coming-of-age satire, King Knight is the latest film from writer and director Richard Bates Jr., who I'm glad to say joins me now on the podcast. Richard, I thank you so very much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So, you know, doing my research as I want to do um, with uh, anyone I interview, I heard you a couple of times kind of describe this film as as if uh, Nickelodeon made... uh, Jodorowsky's The Holy Mountain, and it's a very apt kind of dis- uh, description, something that you can <laughs> definitely slap on uh, the poster or DVD cover. Um, it's interesting how this movie, you really did have an aim for a certain type of vibe. You wanted to, and I think what you said was strip the cynicism um, from, from this film and focus more as happiness as a motivator for making the film. What really brought about mm-hmm. that kind of really direct kind of tone that you were looking for with this movie as compared to the other ones beforehand? Well, I think... Um... I mean, I think that a lot of the social and political kind of turmoil and and upheaval uh, around the time when I was figuring out what my next project would be, you know, and I um, I knew uh, I needed to be happy, and I knew other people needed to be happy, and and I wanted to make something that hopefully would would do both, you know. Um, so uh, I was I was actually pitched a script like a witch. Of, it was a good script. Um, and, and they say, you know, what would you bring to it? And inevitably, I kind of realized I, I don't think I would be the right person to make it because I don't, uh, my approach would be completely different. Um, so uh, so I kind of uh, went and I wrote my own witch movie. Uh, um, and it ended up being kind of inspired by the movies that make me happy, you know, like the 90s John Waters movies, such as, you know, Pecker, specifically Pecker. So I've seen it a thousand times, but, um, but I usually take a very uh, cynical approach uh, to a lot of the satire I do. And I, 
I made a very concerted effort to uh, love every character in this. And that was really part of the exercise of, of writing it was, was to, to strip that all away, you know. Witchcraft, I've also read is something that you have an interest in. Um, I think you said like half your book collection is, is based on, on witchcraft and the supernatural and such. Yeah. Um, when it comes to the rituals in this movie, because when you deal with things that have to do kind of like witchcraft, Wicca or pagan traditions, et cetera, ritual is really very much part of the process of it. The, the rituals that we see in the film, are they based on real rituals? Are they satire of rituals? Are they spoofs of stuff? How does that exactly work in regards to that? No, most most all of them are based on real real rituals. Um, pretty much pretty much all of them. Um uh, so yeah, so, you know, I tried to make sure that, especially, you know, after I wrote the first draft, I had a lot of my friends who were practicing witches read it to make sure that it was, you know, they found it funny without being sort of inconsiderate. Cause I, mm-hmm. I knew, I knew if I was going to change anyone's mind about a witch, you know, the, the worst thing I could do is make a movie about how witches are better than you. And this is the, the only way and the right way, right? The, right. the last thing anyone wants uh, right now is to be preached to. So the idea was just to uh, show people that witches are humans, just like anyone else, uh, searching for the same answers, the same questions at the end of the day. Um, and once we found that sort of sweet spot uh, where everyone seemed to to be happy, and, and uh, then we just kind of went for it, you know. The Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast is brought to you by 80s Tees. 80s Tees is an online retailer of licensed t-shirts and pop culture gear from your favorite movies, TV shows, cartoons, video games, comic books, and musicians. Celebrate your inner 80s nerd and click on the link in the show notes below to get the raddest retro t-shirts delivered to your door. The Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast is brought to you by Loot Crate. Founded in 2012, Loot Crate is the worldwide leader in fan subscription boxes. Loot Crate partners with industry leaders in entertainment, gaming, sports, and pop culture to deliver monthly themed crates, produce interactive experiences in digital content, and film original video productions. No matter what you geek out about, Loot Crate has a subscription box for you. To get your very own exclusive collectibles, apparel, and gear delivered to your door, be sure to click on the link in the show notes below. The Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast is also brought to you by Voodoo. Watch the latest movies and TV shows anytime, anywhere. No subscriptions, no contract. Enjoy stunning quality in up to 4K ultra high definition at home and download and watch on your mobile device as well. To rent and buy from over 100,000 titles or watch thousands of movies free with Voodoo Movies on us, be sure to click on the link in the show notes below. Now, back to the show. Speaking of rituals, so there like a very abs- absurd kind of ritual that a lot of people kind of go through is the whole high school reunion ritual. Um, you know, right. I had my recently had a 20th anniversary since my graduation from high school. I was invited to my reunion. I didn't go because, you know, if I haven't spoken to these people in 20 years, why am I visiting them now? That's kind of my, my philosophy towards it. Um, when sure. it comes to uh, the, the high school reunion as a linchpin to kind of like have this character of Thorn go through kind of this kind of coming of age, what was it, what is it about high school reunions you think that gets people kind of like, you know, really jittery kind of nervous especially like when you're dealing i think in his case it's 15 years since he um, was in a, in high school yeah so so essentially well i mean i i mean i can only speak for myself but what it is uh, you know everyone has an idea of who you are in high school uh including yourself but really you you've sort of lived uh under the roof of someone else you really don't haven't had the the opportunity to really find yourself right so that that person you are in high school, uh, there are elements of, of who you really are, and, and and but but you really haven't had the the time and the freedom to discover that. So there's always there are always things that are embarrassing about uh, about uh, what you did to fit in or how you were when you were just listening to someone else or before you you know there you're not really you're not fully you yeah. you know. Um, I know something that I, I certainly poked fun at in this was, you know, I was the film. I used to go to film camp. I walked around my high school with a film camera. All I ever wanted to do is make movies. Right. Yeah. And uh, so 
uh, I'm fortunate enough to make these very sort of strange, specific movies, uh, you know, truly like living my dream. And, um, and I did get, I got the most likely to succeed superlative at my high school for filmmaking, which, which to everyone uh, then would mean I would be making something, you know, like Michael Bayish, The Rock, like that's a big movie, that's a success, you know? So it's it's always so strange to people you're doing that you made a movie about that, you made hmm. this, wait, that happens in your movies? Like, are you serious? You, like, you know? So it's very strange um, and, and kind of funny who, uh, who I really, I don't even necessarily want to say fully evolved into, a part of its evolution, but who I was when, when I was allowed to be myself, right? <laughs> you know? Yes, absolutely. And there's a key quote in, in your movie, which is um, Thorne kind of yells out after an experience kind of like uh, on, on, on some drugs, he yells out, I am a work in progress. And I think that's right. something that's essential for, for all of us. I mean, I'm, I'm 40 and I'm still a work in progress. Like the, who I am today is different to when I was, you know, last year, especially the last couple of years with all the things that have been going on in the world. And it's really interesting how your movie, you know, you could talk about the witchcraft or everything else, but it comes down to, I think, essentially like a message of kind of self-acceptance and growth um, above anything else. It's not about only who you are, um, who you were in the past, but how you can, you know, make peace with who you are in the past to make yourself a better future. Yeah, there there is no true growth, right, without self-acceptance. I mean, that's something... That, that, that you really do have to, to come to terms with, you know, um, and it's hard, it's hard. And it, it, you know, it's for some people, it takes more work than others, but, you know, I'm very fortunate. I have this sort of creative outlet, right. I, you know, I feel like I've almost documented my life through these movies, you know, uh, I can sort of see, you know, high school and excision, uh, post collegiate malaise and suburban Gothic and, and all that stuff, you know, trash fires sort of, uh, uh, figuring out uh, how to be an adult. And then, you know, uh, tone deaf certainly just inspired by all the sort of uh, political madness uh, going on around us. But with this, I just want to take a very humanist approach, you know, um, almost completely humanist in, and kind of, you know, I guess uh, highlights um, the fact that we all, we are, we really all have a lot more in common than, What's really interesting too is that um, with uh, your film, um, you, you can hear me okay on your end. Yeah, yeah, great. Sorry, just froze it. Um, yeah, all good. What's really interesting as well is that in regards to the comedy in the film, we as we as the audience are watching it, we are you know we are watching. I think we are watching a very funny film. So witty film. The humor is very sharp. But your instruction to your actors was to be very earnest in the way that they approached the to them. You said to them, we're not making a comedy. We're making, I think you said in, in uh, one interview, we're making Sophie's choice. You know, this is serious stuff. Yeah. But well, that's you know, what I said to them. Yeah. yeah. But um, but it's really interesting kind of the process in, in a way that kind of, kind of came about that. I mean, were, was that something that you always had from the beginning or is that something that kind of came about when you were shooting the film that you wanted to really make sure that they kind of took it as a drama, but really what we are kind of making here was a, a, a comedy just because of the kind of like, you know, the way that you were crafted as a filmmaker. Well, that, that was, that was very much from the, from the script stage, you know, because I, I, all my movies take place in sort of heightened version of versions of reality. Right. But I, I push things a little bit further uh, with certain lines, uh, knowing that we would compensate for that with the delivery being sort of dead serious. And, and this sort of idea, um, I, I, you know, I have a sort of a drier sense of humor to begin with, but um I, I think what really sort of attracts me to comedy is treating uh, low stakes as high stakes, which is actually how we all treat every, you know, it's, it's the, could, the smallest thing in a movie could be the end of the world to you in your life. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, so, so really the, the idea was to make sure that was to sort of treat, make this is low stakes and treat it like it was the most like a disaster film. Um, you know? Another thing that I, that I read is that, um, like last year, I think it was last January, you, you mentioned that you lost your father. And condolences in regards to that. Um, Thank you. The interview I read, uh, listened to, I think it was April, April last year. You said you were working on a movie about your dad. Um, yeah. Is that something that is still very much on the table in regards to your next project? 
I was working on it last night. Yeah. Um, it's just not, it's still not good enough. Uh, it's a different thing, you know, when it's, when you, I, I mean, look, I got, I, I've been writing with a picture of my dad uh, right next to me and, um, and uh patchouli candle because he he like he's a kind of a hippie mm-hmm. uh so uh every night when i write it i got the picture in the candle lit. um so that yeah so i've that's pretty much been my main focus i mean i i even turned down another um potential uh opportunity that uh, my wife uh would have wished <laughs> that i took uh but uh, I just can't do. I know I can't do anything till I till I do this. Um, you know, I wouldn't have ever been able to do anything without this guy. You know, I mean, he's a, he's my he's really my hero. And I say as a thirty six year old man, and I he I really looked at him as my hero up until. I mean, I still do. But um, you know, he always wanted to be in the arts. He sacrificed sort of everything so so I could. You know, um, so it's just uh, you know I love him. Yeah, very. I can very much tell that you can, especially like just listening to you talking about him there. And I'm um, also heard that um, meditating was something that you embarked on sometime last year. Are you still meditating? I, did. I am. I, I am. Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. Johnny Pemberton, an actor in this movie, sort of uh, turned me on to it. So uh, I took a few courses and everything, and I've been doing that. Um, do you find that, and, your uh, writings, uh, that your approach to writing and the approach to your craft is different after doing something like that? Like having a, uh, like taking that, that time to kind of just be on your own, focus on your breathing, clearing your head. Does that kind of help out as a, as a, you know, artistic kind of sense as a creative person? You know, I, I'm sure, I'm sure it influences something, right? I can't point it to exactly what it is. I know that I'm a, a lot more chill, you know, um, probably more fun to be around. I mean, I was very, uh, I mean, I barely left my house for, you know, after what happened to my uh, father or whatever. So, um, you know, all these little things sort of help, you know, I'm just trying to get my life kind of back on track, uh, you know, as best I can and be a good husband to my wife. And, and uh, you know, you know, when you get, when you become depressed, you sort of become so uh, concerned with yourself, you know, mm-hmm. and it's, uh, you in, uh, inevitably become selfish. And so it's, I'm trying to, you know, stop thinking about myself and think about others. Yes. Well, I had, um, I've also uh, deal, I'm dealing with my own bouts of depression and I find I've taken therapy over the last several months or so. And it's really interesting kind of like when you deal with the issue of it and you kind of like you approach it and you try to change change the way you look at things. I think it's a, it's a really good thing that, uh, that you can, yeah. you know, recognize what's going on and, and make, make moves to, to just better yourself. You know, and I think it's, it's pretty cool, right? Yeah, it is. It is really cool because if you're better yourself, then you're, you're better for your family. And when you're better for your family, then you're better for the world, you know? So and I think that's exactly. a, that's a really cool thing. And I think King Dai is a really good uh, step forward in regards to that as well, because in itself, it is a coming of age uh, story. And um, for everyone out there listening, I really recommend you check this film out. February 17th, select theaters across the US as well, digital and on demand, King Knight. Um, really funny, really, really great satire um, from a great filmmaker, Richard Bates Jr. I thank you so very much for your time today and uh, congrats with the movie. And um, hopefully when that film is, uh, when you've done that film uh, in regards uh, to your father's story, I'd love to see it and talk to you about it when it happens. Absolutely. Yeah, this was a super cool, nice interview, man. I really appreciate it. So uh, I would, anytime, I would love to. Thank you for watching the Matt's Movie Reviews channel. Please subscribe for more reviews, podcast interviews, and exclusive content. Also, if you would like to request a review and support my work, please join my Patreon via the link in the description below.